In this video, we'll talk about fluorescence correlation spectroscopy or FCS, which is a technique to quantify molecular dynamics by looking at the correlations in fluorescence fluctuation. Of course, the biomolecule has to be labeled with any kind of fluorescence probe. Now, FCS typically measures time scales in terms of milliseconds to second level. So FCS is performed using a standard confocal microscopy. If you don't know how a confocal microscope works, you can quickly look at the video in the I button or in the description. Now using FCS with proper models and parameters, one can quantify diffusion coefficients, average concentrations, hydrodynamic radius, kinetics of chemical reaction, and more complex parameters like single triplet dynamics. All these terminologies might be difficult to understand. So let us take simple example to look at the application of FCS first, and then we move to understand how we can make sense of our FCS data. So let's say we want to understand the diffusion of a lipid particle through the lipid bilayer. And this can be achieved using FCS measurements. Obviously, the particular lipid that to be probed has to be labeled by any kind of fluorescence dye. Now let's say we want to quantify vesicle trafficking inside the cell in real time and this can be performed using FCS. Let's say we want to look at the neurotransmitter trafficking through the axon of a neuron and these kind of molecular dynamics can be studied using the fluorescence correlation spectroscopy. One can uh, calculate the movement time scale, movement kinetics, direction of the movement, etc. Now let us try to understand how FCS measurement work. So this is the confocal objective, which is focusing the laser into a tight diffraction limited spot. And let's say a particular dynamic particle marked here in black is moving across this particular laser volume. So obviously when it moves through the particular laser uh, volume, there is a fluctuation in intensity that can be observed by the detector. In this case, a detector would be very sensitive camera. Now this intensity fluctuation is the key essence to understand the FCS data. So let us assume a time point T. So we say the uh, fluorescence intensity at the time point T is let's say X. We have to understand how this particular intensity is correlated with another time point for the same molecule. Let's say that time point is T plus tau. Tau could be any rational value. Now using that, or in order to predict that, we use a autocorrelation function. And that autocorrelation function can actually predict and determine the overall fluorescence fluctuation over time and thereby gives us information about molecular dynamics. Now let us try to understand this autocorrelation function in a bit more details. So let us assume this particular uh, molecule is moving across this confocal volume and we have two time points T and T plus tau and we are trying to look at the fluorescence signal how they are similar or dissimilar in these two time points and that, that can be predicted by a fluctuation function let's say ft. So this ft fluctuation function can be used to determine a autocorrelation function. So the values of ft and ft plus tau can be calculated from the confocal image very easily by, by drawing an ROI and quantifying that pixel intensity of that spot. So just by looking at the pixel intensity at time t and let's say at time t plus 5 seconds or 5 milliseconds, one can understand how the fluorescence fluctuation is happening. Now more the fluctuation, that means there is dynamics. If there is no fluctuation, that means the molecule is stagnant, that, 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 thereby there is no fluctuation. In this particular equation, these open brackets represent the temporal average, tau represents the lag time and gt is the autocorrelation function. So here the autocorrelation function is the most important thing that we need to understand. Now this autocorrelation function tells us about molecular dynamics. How is that? Let me show you. So let's say we have two situations. In first situation, the graph looks like this and the second situation, the graph looks like this. And the second situation tells you about a restricted diffusion model in a micro domain of a membrane. You don't understand anything. But a trained biophysicist can quickly look at this data and tell you that there is a slow decay rate here in the curve and a fast decay rate here in the curve. So it's a more complicated dynamics that has been captured using FCS. Now let us try to understand that like a biologist. So in the first example, this particular 
lipid molecule can diffuse all along the membrane and that is kind of like a free diffusion so this diffusion is pretty fast and the time scale was like pretty uniform throughout the diffusion time now in the second case there are some point of time where the diffusion is happening slowly and there are some time where the diffusion is happening faster that means there could be restricted microdomains inside the membrane which slows down the activity of or movement of these labeled lipid particle and exactly that is captured by the autocorrelation function here in this fcs measurement now at least you have some sense that how the autocorrelation function and the fcs measurement can tell us a lot about the molecular dynamics inside a live cell so there are many pros and cons of autocorrelation spectroscopy for example there could be uh, we can measure quantitatively the diffusion kinetics very small sample volume is required so it's great for uh, uh, single molecular analysis it can provide direct measurement of stoichiometry which is great but there are a lot of cons for example one needs a fancy confocal setup for doing this this kind of fluctuations which ranges over milliseconds requires fancy camera with very high frame rate and these camera need to determine single molecular fluctuations that means the sensitivity camera has to be very good a back illuminated scmos or a emccd camera would be appropriate for these kind of analysis also there it the data analysis requires prior knowledge so that means it's not that simple to do fcs but it's a very useful biophysical technique which can tell us lot about the molecular dynamics i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can get more notes and flashcards in my facebook page also follow us in instagram all the links are provided in the description you can support our channel via super thanks see you in next video